Hello everybody. So I'm just going to make a, a, a very quick statement. Uh, I want to thank uh, the, the folks who are involved here in helping arrange this visit at El Reno, uh, a federal penitentiary. And this is part of our effort to highlight uh, both the challenges and opportunities that we face with respect to the criminal justice system. Uh, many of you heard me speak uh, on Tuesday in Philadelphia about the fact that uh, the United States accounts for 5% of the world's population. We account for 25% uh, of the world's inmates. And that represents a huge surge since uh, 1980. A primary driver of this mass incarceration uh, phenomenon is uh, our drug laws, our mandatory minimum sentencing around drug laws. And you know, we have to consider whether this is the smartest way for us to uh, both control crime and uh, rehabilitate individuals. Uh, this is costing taxpayers across America $80 billion a year. And as I said on Tuesday, there are people who need to be in prison. Uh, and I don't have tolerance for uh, violent criminals. Many of them uh, may have made mistakes, but uh, we need to keep our communities safe. On the other hand, when we're looking at nonviolent uh, offenders, most of them growing up in uh, environments in which drug traffic is common, uh, where many of their family members may have been involved uh, in the drug trade, uh, we have to reconsider whether 20 year, 30 year life sentences uh, for nonviolent crimes uh, is the best way uh, for us to solve these problems. Uh, you know, here at El Reno, there's some excellent work that's being done inside uh, this facility uh, to provide job training, college degrees, uh, you know, drug counseling. The question is not only how do we make sure that we sustain those programs here in the prison, but how do we make sure that those same kind of institutional supports are there for kids and teenagers before they get into the criminal justice system? And are there ways for us to divert young people who make mistakes early on in life uh, so that they don't get into the system in the first place? Uh, the good news is, is that we've got Democrats and Republicans who are, I think are starting to work together uh, in Congress, and we're starting to see uh, bipartisan efforts in state legislatures as well uh, to start to re-examine some of these uh, sentencing laws to look at what kinds of work we can do in the community to keep kids out of uh, the criminal justice system in the first place, how we can build on the successes uh, for rehabilitation while uh, individuals are incarcerated, and then what can we do to improve uh, reentry uh, going forward. I just had a chance to meet with uh, six inmates, all of them in for uh, drug offenses, many of them here for very long uh, uh, sentences. And uh, every single one of them emphasized the fact that they understood they had done something wrong. Uh, they were prepared to take responsibility for it, but they also urged us to, to think about how could, how could society have reached them earlier on in life uh, to keep them out of trouble. Uh, they expressed huge appreciation for uh, the educational opportunities and drug counseling that they get here in prison, and they expressed some, some fear and concern about uh, how difficult the transition was going to be. So uh, we've got an opportunity to make a difference at a time when overall violent crime rates have been dropping at the same time as incarcerations last year dropped for the first time in 40 years. Uh, my hope is that uh, if we can keep on looking at the evidence, keep on looking at the facts, figure out what works, uh, that we can start making a change, that will save taxpayers money, keep our streets safe, uh, and perhaps most importantly, uh, keep families intact and break this cycle in which young people, uh, particularly young people of color, uh, are so prone uh, to end up in a criminal justice system that makes it harder for them uh, to ever get a job uh, and ever uh, be uh, effective, uh, full citizens of this country. Uh, so I, I want to express appreciation to 
everybody who helped uh, make this happen. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to uh, our prison guards. They've got a really tough job, uh, and uh, most of them uh, are doing it in exemplary fashion. Uh, one of the things that we talked about is how uh, we can continue to improve conditions in prisons. This is an uh, outstanding institution uh, within the system, and yet we've, they've got enormous overcrowding issues. Uh, I just took a look at a cell where, because of overcrowding, typically we might have three people uh, housed in a cell that looks to be, what, 15 by? Nine by 10. Huh? Nine by 10. Nine by 10. Three full-grown men in a nine by 10 cell. Um, there's been some improvement, now we have two. But yeah, overcrowding like that is something that has to be addressed. Um, as I said uh, the other day, gang activity, sexual assault inside these prisons, those are all things that have to be addressed. And so we're also going to be consulting with prison guards, wardens, uh, and others to see uh, how we can uh, you know, make some critical reforms. A lot of this, though, is going to have to happen at the state level. So my, my goal is that we start seeing some improvements at the federal level and that we're then able to see states across the country pick up uh, the baton. And there are already some states that are leading the way on, on uh, both sentencing reform as well as prison reform. We want to uh, make sure that we're seeing what works and, uh, and build off that. All right? Thanks, everybody. Uh, you know, visiting with these, uh, with these six individuals, um, you know, I've said this before, when they describe their youth and their childhood, uh, these, are, these are young people who made mistakes that aren't that different than the mistakes I made and the mistakes that a lot of you guys made. Uh, the difference is they did not have the kinds of support structures, the second chances, the resources uh, that would allow them to survive those mistakes. And, uh, you know, I think we have a tendency sometimes to uh, almost take for granted or think it's normal that so many young people end up in our criminal justice system. It's not normal. It's not what happens in other countries. What is normal is teenagers doing stupid things. Uh, what is normal is young people uh, making mistakes. And we've got to be able to distinguish between dangerous individuals who need to be incapacitated and incarcerated versus young people who are in an environment in which uh, they are adapting, but if given different opportunities, a different vision of life, uh, could be thriving the way we are. That's what strikes me. There but for the grace of God. Uh, and, and, and that, I think, is something that we all have to think about. All right? Thank you.